Chapter 5.1, Exploring What Makes Triangles Congruent. Okay, so the first part of this chapter is just basically they're going to be giving you two triangles and you got to check are they congruent. And it's very simple. In order to be congruent, all three angles have to measure the exact same amount and all three sides have to measure the exact same amount. Now, they're going to have, you know, the triangles... Uh, like in this one, one of them is uh, one of them looks like this, and the other one is the same thing, but upside down and with different letters. All right, but if you look at it quickly, the angles are 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90, and the sides are 2, 1, and 1.7, 2, 1, and 1.7. That's it. The triangles are congruent. All right. Obviously, here they're going through all the details. That looks all complicated, but they're just comparing. Hey, look, side GH equals side KL and they both equal 1.7 meters, okay? Side HJ equals side LM, and they both equal one meter. That's all they're going through down there. And on your homework, they're probably gonna make you do that, fill in the blanks. But all you're doing is comparing what side is congruent to which side in the other triangle. If all three sides, if all three corresponding sides and all three corresponding angles are equal, are congruent, then that means that both triangles are congruent, okay? That's what it means up here by deciding if triangles are congruent by comparing corresponding parts. Okay? Así que la primera, en Spanish, la primera sección es bien fácil. Tenemos que decidir si los triángulos son congruentes uh, uh, comparando las partes que corresponden. Okay? Así que es simplemente chequear los lados que corresponden para ver si miden igual y los ángulos que corresponden, y chequear si miden igual. Si todos miden igual, entonces los dos triángulos son congruentes. Ok, así que aquí, si, si miran a los ángulos, es 30, 60 y 90, y esta también es 30, 60 y 90. Y los lados son 2, 1 y 1.7, 2, 1 y 1.7. Ahora, siempre uno se tiene que fijar que son los lados que corresponden y los ángulos que corresponden. Ok, pero, pero si son igual, entonces los dos triángulos son congruentes, right? Always make sure you're checking the angles that correspond on, on, from one triangle to the other and the sides that correspond. Ok, so let's look at a couple more easy examples. Alright, so this is triangle ACB. So seven, if you look at the sides, it's 7.9, 8.5, and 12.1. 7.9, 8.4. This one says 8.4, and this one says 8.5. All right, that's it. They're not going to be congruent. That's it. They're not congruent. Period. All right. However, down here they're asking you, they're having you go like step by step and compare the corresponding sides. They're showing you that hey, side AB corresponds to side DE, and they both measure 12.1 centimeters. So side AB is congruent to side DE. Again, you're going to have that on the homework. All right. It's simple, but they're just making you go through each step to make sure you understand. <clears throat> Here they're showing you that side AC is congruent to DF and they're both equal 7.9. So side AC is congruent to DF. However, the sides that are not congruent is BC is not congruent, is not equal. BC is not equal to EF. So side BC is not congruent to side EF. The triangles are not congruent because there is a pair of cor corresponding sides that are not congruent. Okay? Así que uh, in Spanish... Aquí cuando veo enseguida que un lado es 8.5 y el, el otro tiene 8.4, ya se sabe que los triángulos no son congruentes. Pero en la tarea te va a hacer uh, comparar cada lado individualmente para estar seguro que tú entiendes. Por ejemplo, que el lado AB es igual al lado DE y los dos son igual a 12.1 centímetros. Así que el lado AB es congruente al lado DE. Aquí está haciendo lo mismo con este lado y aquí te dice, pero BC no es igual a EF. Así que el lado, el segmento BC no es congruente al segmento EF. Los triángulos no son congruentes porque hay un par de lados correspondientes que no son congruentes. All right, moving on. Guys, for the sake of trying to make this video quick, Especially since the last class, the video was really long, and a lot of my videos have been really long. Let me not explain these, because I think they're so easy that you guys could figure them out, okay? They're in the video, so you could always pause them if you need help on the uh, homework, and look at these, okay? 
Esto es demasiado fácil, no voy a gastar tiempo en el video explicándolo. Está en el video, así que cuando están haciendo la tarea lo pueden parar y leer la explicación. Ok, but it's pretty simple. Ok, same thing with these, there are the answers. Esto es la misma cosa y están las respuestas. Let's get to the more interesting problems. Ok, so let's get to this part. Ok, aquí son problemas más interesantes. All right, these are also simple. Let's just read the topic a second. Applying properties of congruent triangles. Triangles are part of many interesting designs. You can ensure that triangles are congruent by making corresponding sides congruent and corresponding angles are congruent. To do this, you may have to use the triangle sum theorem. That's what I wanted to get to, the triangle sum theorem, which states that the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180. All right, look, that's all I wanted to point out, okay? The triangle sum theorem. What is that about? Okay, something about adding, because the word sum means that you add, and something to do with triangles. Something about adding triangles. All right, so I'm sure you all know, because we've said it I've said it before, and you've heard it before, that when you add up all the angles inside of a triangle, it always has to equal 180. That's what the triangle sum theorem is. When you add up all the angles in a triangle, it always has to equal 180. Real quick, let me say that in Spanish. Este teorema de sumar triángulos es que lo que ya deben saber que cuando se suma todos los ángulos de un triángulo, la suma siempre te tiene que dar 180 grados. All right, so look at this triangle. We could do it without even looking down here. All right, this triangle right here, it says that angle J is 55, angle K is 45. So what does angle L have to equal? Well, 55 plus 45, 55 plus 45 is 100 degrees, okay? And when I add up these three angles, it's got to equal 180. So, I mean, it's already obvious, but just to make it more clear, 55 plus 45 plus, let me put X here, plus X, plus X. When you add them all up, it has to equal 180, right? Well, let me not put that. All right, so 55 plus 45 is 100. So 100 plus X has to equal 180. Again, you should already realize what the answer is. I'm just going through the motions just in case anybody needs it. All right, so X has to equal 80 degrees. You could do that mental math, okay? All right, so así que el ángulo que falta aquí tiene que medir 80 grados. Okay, now why did I do that? Because look, this angle is 80 degrees, all right? Now look at the other triangle. In the other triangle, we have also 55 and 45, but where the 80, degree, 80 degrees is supposed to be, like this angle is the corresponding angle that goes with this one. So that one's supposed to be 80 degrees, but instead of 80 degrees, it says this. And they're going to ask us, it's down here, they're going to ask us to find the value of x. We're going to have to find the value of x. Vamos a tener que encontrar el valor de x. Y este ángulo es el ángulo que corresponde a este ángulo. So, the way I'm going to find it, you should be able to realize this, maybe a lot of you guys already, is I'm going to make an equation that says 5x plus 30 equals 80. I could have written it the other way around and it's the same thing, okay? This angle has to equal this angle for the two, angle, for the two triangles to be uh, congruent. Este ángulo tiene que medir igual que este ángulo para que la, los dos triángulos sean congruentes. Alright, so now I'm going to find the value of x. By subtracting 30 from both sides, bring down this 5x. So 5x equals 50. So now to get rid of the 5, I divide both sides by 5. These 5s cancel out, so x equals 10. That's it, I'm done. Okay, ahí está mi respuesta, x igual a 10. All right, let's look at, same thing here, guys, same thing. You know what, let's not even, I'll do this, I'll do this stuff later. First, let me just find why, because I know that's what they're going to ask us, okay? Déjame hacer esto luego, primero déjame encontrar el valor de Y. All right, so the 50, here, this is 50, so it goes with this side. The 30 goes with this side. So the 36 goes with this side right here. Okay, el 36, el lado con el 36 corresponde a este lado. Whoops, what did I do? All right, hopefully I'm still recording. <laughs> I don't know. My computer just crashed. Let me bring that back up. All 
<sighs> Must have been the work of Miyagi Do. Trying to stop my lesson. I won't let them stop me, guys. Cobra Kai never dies. Here we are, back in business. All right. Like Stingray said, never disrespect another man's dojo. All right, moving on. Guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch Cobra Kai on Netflix. Come on, get with it. All right, so like I was saying, this side goes with this side right here. So I'm going to set up an equation. In order for these triangles to be congruent, this side has to equal that side. So 2y plus 20 equals 36. All right, now to solve for y, the number that's with the variable, you move last. The first thing I got to move is this 20. El número que está con el variable se, se, con el variable se mueve al final. Primero tengo que quitar este 20. So this is going to give me 16 equals 2y. Man, this is easy. So y equals 8. All right, y equals 8. Y equals 8. Okay, now let me just point out a couple of other quick things. Notice, I've mentioned this in the past, but now we're seeing it in the problems, okay? Notice that this angle has one line, and this angle right here has one line. That means this angle equals the measure of this angle. That's very important, okay? Very important and very easy. Notice this angle has two lines, that mean, and, and this one has two lines. That means angle C equals angle F. And then notice that this one has three lines, and this one has three lines. That means angle B equals angle E. Okay, and that's what they're asking me to write right here. So while I write it, I'll repeat it in Spanish. Fíjense que este ángulo tiene una línea y este ángulo tiene una línea. Eso quiere decir que la medida de ángulo A es congru congruente a la medida de ángulo D. Okay, ahora ángulo B tiene tres líneas y ángulo E tiene tres líneas. Okay, tiene tres líneas. Así que eso quiere decir que ángulo B... Mide igual que ángulo E, así que los dos ángulos son congruentes. Y ángulo C tiene dos líneas y ángulo F tiene dos líneas, así que ángulo C es congruente a ángulo F. Así que el lado DE o, o el segmento DE corresponde, ¿dónde está DE? Ok, aquí. Corresponde al lado uh, AB. Fíjense en, en la orden de las letras, porque yo tuve que pensar. DE, fíjense que va desde el ángulo que tiene una línea hasta el ángulo que tiene tres líneas. Cuando miré aquí, si voy en esta dirección y escribo BA, estaría mal. Creo que te lo marca mal. Lo debo escribir AB para seguir el patrón yendo del ángulo que tiene una línea hasta el ángulo que tiene tres líneas. Let me say that in English, because I didn't say that in English. Okay, notice when I was filling this out, it says, so segment DE corresponds to, all right, if you look at segment DE, it's going from, the D is the angle that has one line, and the E is the angle that has three lines. So when I looked over here, I didn't write BA, I wrote AB to continue the same pattern. I'm starting with the angle that has one line, which is A, and going to the B, which is the angle that has three lines, to keep it consistent. I believe if you would have written BA, I could be wrong, maybe it accepts it, but I believe if you write BA that it might mark it wrong, so write AB. All right, so down here, write an equation to find a value of Y. Okay, so DE equals AB, and then what I wrote up here, 2Y plus 20 equals 36, 2Y equals 16, so Y equals 8. All right, let's move on. There are all the answers. All right, so same type of thing. I'll try to do it quickly. Um, all right, before I could do anything, I got to figure out what is this angle right here. So using the triangle sum theory that says that when you add up all the angles, they got to equal 180. So 112 plus 25 plus X has to equal 180. X is this one right here, okay? X el ángulo que me falta aquí. So 112 plus 25, use mental math. 2 plus 5 is 7. 1 plus 2 is 3, and this 1 plus nothing is 1. Now subtract 137 from both sides. Again, use mental math. Don't use a calculator. That's lame. All right? I cannot subtract 7 from 0, so I'm going to turn the 0 into a 10 
by borrowing one from the eight. The eight becomes a seven. Ten minus seven is three. Seven minus three is four. One minus one is zero. So x equals 43, all right? But that's not, wait a minute. You know what, my bad. I should not have used the letter x because they're using the letter x here. I should have used some other letter. Let me put like a capital B or something. But basically, the angle that's missing, sorry about that. I don't mean to confuse anybody. The angle that's missing is 43 degrees, okay? No debía haber usado la X aquí porque lo están usando en el otro lado. Y eso puede um, confundir algunos de ustedes, okay? Debía haber usado otro variable. Okay, pero, pero um, este ángulo que falta es 43 grados. Let me erase all that. So this is 43 degrees. So now that means that this angle equals this angle okay este angulo tiene que ser igual a este angulo so just write an equation you could write 43 equals whatever let me do it that way just in case you could write it like this or you could switch there you could write x plus 17 on the left and 43 on the right it's the same thing all right so now subtract 17 from both sides Reten 17 de los dos lados. so x equals don't use a calculator i cannot take away seven from three make the three a 13 by borrowing one from the four, which makes the four a three. 13 minus seven is six. You should have that memorized. If you don't, that's a bad sign. Three minus one is two. Sorry about that bell. That's what happens when you make videos at school. All right, so X equals 26 for this one, okay? X equals 26. Now when I'm playing this video for real for you guys in class, I'm going to think the bell is just rung for real and the class is over. I'm going to be confused. All right. So there's the answer. Let's look at number eight. Number eight is going to be the same thing. All right. So this side corresponds to this side, right? So this one's actually quicker, all right, because I could just set up the equation 4y plus 12 equals 32. This one had an, an extra step involved because I first had to figure out what that angle is. Okay, esta, esta tenía un paso más porque primero tenía que encontrar cuánto mide este ángulo. All right, so now subtract 12 from both sides. You're going to get 20 equals 4y. Now divide both sides by 4. Y equals 5. Easy. What that, that took me like 10 seconds at most. All right, so there are the answers. All right, um... All right, moving on. Let's, let me do these. All right, so in this one, again, we got to do that first step, okay, of finding first what is this angle right here. All right, so 69 plus 50 plus, well, let, let me use a, a, a small letter C, okay, a lowercase c. Has to equal 180 because they're using X over here. 69 plus 50, mental math, 9 plus 0 is 9, and 6 plus 5 is 11. Now subtract 119 from both sides. All right. Again, don't use a calculator. That's weak. Um, all right. So I can't take away 9 from 0. Make the 0 a 10 by borrowing 1 from the 8. 10 minus 9 is 1. 7 minus 1 is 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. So C equals 61 degrees. C equals 61 degrees. So this angle is 61 degrees. So that means that 61 degrees equals 2x plus 5 right here. So now subtract 5 from both sides. This is going to give you 56 equals 2x. Okay, now divide both sides by 2. Okay, and um, these twos cancel cancel out. So x equals 2 goes into 2, I'm sorry, 2 goes into 5 2 times. Remainder 1. You put the 1 in front of the 6 for 16. 2 goes into 16 8 times. That's my answer. x equals 28. Or you could write it like this, x equals 28. All right, let's look at number seven. Okay, so number seven, what's happening here? Three point. <laughs> okay, on number seven, look. Okay, they made it look a little trickier, but it's, it's, it's still simple. All right, to figure out what side does this, does this correspond to, is it this one or this one? Because they're, okay, so to figure it out, just look at these angles. This side is the side okay that it starts you have an angle with one line here and an angle with three lines here so it has to be this side right here 
it can't be this side because you have over here the angle with two lines. And that's not the case on, on these two endpoints. Okay, así que este lado tiene que corresponder a este lado. Porque si te fijas en los ángulos, queda entre los, el ángulo que tiene una línea y el ángulo que tiene tres líneas. Okay, así que, so 3z minus 3 equals 1.8. I move this 3 to the right. Remember, remember to line up the decimal points. Tengo que alinear los puntos decimales. So 3z comes down. 3z equals 4.8. Divide both, whoops, divide both sides by 3. The 3s cancel out. Mental math. 3 goes into 4 one time. Remainder 1. The 1 remainder, you put it in front of this 8 for 18. 3 goes into 18 6 times. Let me help out the people that are bad at dividing. 4.8 divided by 3. 3 goes into 4 one time. The decimal point stays there. 1 times 3 is 3. Remainder 1. Bring down this 8. 3 goes into 18 there. All right, let's move on. I think there's two more problems and I'll be done. All right, I'll try to go through them quickly. All right, so let me look at this one. All right, so 24 goes with 24. 31 goes with 31. So that means that this side goes with 25. 7y minus 10 equals 25. Move the 10 to the right by adding. I'll have 35 equals 7y. Man, this is easy. Now divide both sides by 7. You could have done the whole thing mental math if you know your timetables. What was that? Like 5 seconds? Maybe 7 or 8 seconds? All right, now this one, I got to do that extra step. Let me erase all this. All right, so 22 plus 36 plus, let me put lowercase y, equals uh, 180. So when I add 22 plus 36, 2 plus 6 is 8. 2 plus 3 is 5. So 58 plus y equals 180. Now I'll subtract 58 from both sides. Okay, I cannot take away 8 from 0, so make the 0 a 10 by borrowing 1 from this 8, which becomes a 7. 10 minus 8 is 2. 7 minus 5 is 2. 1 minus nothing is 1. So y equals 122. All right, so this angle that's missing here is 122. So that means that this angle equals this angle. 4w plus 14 equals 122. Subtract both sides by 14. Uh, all right, so I, can I take away 4 from 2? Make the 2 a 12 by borrowing 1 from this 2. Which uh, Okay, so 12 minus 4 is 8. And here, 11, 11 minus 1 is 10. So 4w equals 108. Now divide both sides by 4. Mental math. 4 goes into 10 2 times. Remainder 2. The 2 remainder, put it in front of this 8 for 28. 4 goes into 28 7 times. W equals 27. Guys, I am done. Okay, the homework assignment is in the student portal and it's due by 6 a.m. the next day that you have my class. Make sure to do it, please. There are only um, 8 problems in the homework. There's only 8 problems in the homework if I remember correctly. So it should be easy.